Today we gotta tie up the loose ends to some interesting tales. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. The Lil Wayne guitar is back, my friends. About seven months ago, I did an episode where I told you guys I bought Lil Wayne's Smash guitar, and we sent it off to Sweetwater, and they said they were going to fix it for us, and then we would just have a fun little review and demo of the whole thing completed. I'm sorry, guys, it didn't exactly go as planned. Unfortunately, both Sweetwater's repair team and myself decided it was better not to do this. However, don't be sad. I have another plan here. But let's go ahead and see what all that they ended up doing to this. Well, it looks like just about nothing. Basically, I sent this in to them. It had to wait in their repair bench for a little bit until it was its time to be looked at. And then when they saw it, they're like, okay, yes, we can repair this. And they wanted to take this thing to the nines. And unfortunately, this is one of those weird times when I didn't necessarily want that to happen. I wanted to keep the repair to be visible. And I was thinking something really cool would be like a clear acrylic repair where I can just display it and we could still see see that repair. However, they just didn't think that would be a long-term feasible solution to make this back up to playing standards. And let's face it, guys, Sweetwater's not sponsoring this because they want to be nice to me. They, they want to show you what they're capable of. So we just mutually agreed this wasn't the right project because in order to fix this correctly, it would have required removing most of this tape, having to do a whole bunch of finished touch-ups. So let's not be mad at Sweetwater or me for this because I could have took this two ways. A, never mentioned it again, or B, <laughs> at least give you guys an explanation as to why this thing's now going to pop up on Reverb. I'm not the biggest Lil Wayne fan, and this definitely deserves to be in somebody's collection that is. But don't worry, my friends, we're still partnering with Sweetwater to do a fun modification project. But I wisened up a little bit this time. That footage you just watched, that was me unboxing that thing like six months ago. I've already sent in a new guitar for them to have some fun with, and it's actually one of my personal guitars. And we will be seeing that very soon. The amount of mods we're doing to this thing is just crazy, and it far exceeds the value of the instrument, so it's kind of hilarious in that aspect. So if you were let down about this whole Lil Wayne thing, I hope that makes up for it, and I'm very sorry. But now do you guys remember the Firebird I sent back to Gibson because the finish was peeling off of it? The really cool Johnny Winter? It's finally back. So I'm pretty excited to see what they did here because they didn't really tell me. Are they just going to overspray the area that was flaking? Were they going to do an entire refinish? Because if they were going to refinish it, I was going to request like some crazy custom color. That way I can just have this weird blue burst Johnny Winter Firebird, and I would end up keeping that in my collection. But after a couple of months here, I guess we are going to find out together. Is it a blue burst? No. I can definitely tell this is a completely new finish on this and a completely new <laughs> relic job. In fact, all the techniques that they used honestly feel a little bit differently. But after I had sent this one into him and I waited about a month, I noticed my other Johnny winner started to do the exact same thing. So let's compare these side by side real quick. Oh, wait, 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 hold the phone, guys. They tricked me here. I actually kept the COA of my other guitar because they asked you to do that, not to include any personal items. So I assume that meant everything else within the case, except for, uh, yeah, my old COA was for 74, but this one is 34. So they either refinished the guitar and accidentally stamped the wrong serial <laughs> number back onto it, or they gave me a com completely different guitar. Okay, so I actually can confirm they're the exact same guitar and it was refinished due to the fretboard that's on it and the inlays. So if you look at this old photo of the first inlay, you see how the right side pointy edges have like a line within the inlay? That matches our new guitar. And there's two distinct reddish stripes running up and down this one. So yeah, it's definitely the same guitar, just got refinned. Nothing else, this gives us an interesting tale behind why the COA is mix match. This is definitely not the same aging technique. 74 is the one that I did my review and documentation of. So scroll the neck of this one, and now scroll the neck of the other one. You can tell the aging's very different. The aging between the two that I have, though, is vastly different. I mean, look how finely finished check this one is. This is my other one that's starting to flake in certain areas, whereas our new one has barely even the same amount. But that can vary example to example in general. Look at the color difference on our Firebirds. A little bit more wear on our headstock over here. Our new one's neck wear. The old one's neck wear. I'd actually say I prefer the new one. 
But I tell you guys all the time, each aged one will be a little bit different, but they have certain hallmark details that they have to have, like that ding right here is present on all of them, but not necessarily all of the wear. But here's where you can see the other finish starting to flake up. So check your Johnny Winter Firebirds. It's common knowledge at this point that the early Murphy Lab guitars, whatever they were doing, the finish sometimes doesn't stick. But hey, that's why you have a limited lifetime warranty on stuff like this, so they can fix it if things do go wrong. Wait. <laughs> oh no! I have two number 34s! I know what happened now! I'm not kidding you. These are both 34. So I had sent them a message about the other one after they had this guitar for a couple of months, and when they were referencing what serial number they were supposed to put on it, it must have been completely stripped, and they referenced our emails to see what it was supposed to be, and they accidentally did. <laughs> same. <laughs> you know, th this is something that people will talk about in 20, 30 years. Oh, I own duplicate number 34. But if this other 34 has to go back to be refinished, then they could possibly just swap our serial numbers. That is history in the making here. I guess before I send it back, if anybody wants to buy duplicate serial number 34 with a great tail, feel free to reach out to me and we can talk about it. So weren't those some fun tales, but don't worry, I've got a little bit more for you tonight. This next one, I had purchased this on Reverb a couple of weeks prior, and I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't know what the heck I was doing with this thing. I just knew the parts that were on it were well worth the asking price, so I bought it. This one might not be for the faint of heart yet, but inside here, we've got a Les Paul. But what kind of a Les Paul? Well, let's take it out and see. It's all completely flat lumber. It's very well sanded so far, but take a look at our pickup cavity routes. It's a P90 and a humbucker. Is this the Tom Scholz Boston guitar? Collector's choice that's been sanded down? <laughs> no, no, it's not. This, my friends, is a lovely Gibson USA BFG because we don't have any fret markers on here. But you might be saying, hey, what happened to all the ridges? Well, this is what people like to do to those things. They use them as projects, they sand them out. Now this one actually still has a little bit of flame figuring within it, so that's a nice little treat. But apparently this started life as one of the Gary Moore BFGs. According to our serial number here, it looks like it's from 2007, and yeah, there's already a previous repair attempt here that's not so good. <laughs> this was... You know, a, a good attempt, but it's it's not the right angle. So if you think you might be interested in taking this project guitar on, you can find it on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. And lastly here for tonight, this was a pretty interesting find on eBay. I made an offer on it. They initially just straight up declined it, but then they came back after a couple of days going, oh, it's Trogly. I didn't realize it was you making an offer. All right, how about we do this? So I guess that's my PSA for the day is check who's making an offer. You never know who's trying to buy your stuff on Reverb. Because I won't lie, I'm kind of an impulsive buyer. After my initial offer was declined, I was just ready to move on because I didn't really need this particular item. But it's one of those items where if you do need it, Good luck ever being able to find it. This is a voodoo case. It's got the cool snakeskin exterior, and it is a giant shape. So that's either gonna tell you this is for a flying V or an explorer, and the flying V ones look like this, so that means, yeah, this is an explorer case. Now I do collect explorers, so having a spare one of these cases is not necessarily a bad thing because I find this case design really appealing. That whole red snakeskin vibe is ultra cool. However, since buying this case, I actually did find the other Voodoo Explorer and we did the whole review and demo. But at the same time, there's a Voodoo Explorer out there that somebody needs the case. So if you can prove to me you've got the guitar and you're just missing the case, I'll sell it to you. Otherwise, I'm probably just gonna hold on to this thing because I mean, when else are you gonna find one of these crazy bad boys? But speaking of funny stories, I found one of my old guitars on Reverb. Like I had sold this thing back in 2018, early 2019-ish if I remember correctly, and gear gets flipped all the time. So it's not that uncommon to see my old guitars, but one from this era? You can't forget this thing. But the true kicker is it showed up at a Sam Ash. So not the original guy that I sold it to and it was like hundreds of miles away. So who knows what journey this thing took before it came back to me. Oh. Apparently one of our knobs is no longer here, our switch tip is all busted up. 
<laughs> Great sign, but uh, okay, it just adds to its history, I guess. We're actually lucky enough that the toggle switch tip broke in such a way that you can still secure most of it onto there. And our knob is just loose in general, but it goes back on. But this thing's pretty cool. It just looks like a white Les Paul Studio, right? But it's actually a studio standard. It's just yellowed over so much you can barely tell that it has binding but then you also have the binding on the neck. So I do have a very old review and demo video of this where we go over it in detail, but it has such an iconic look. I remember having a blue refinished one of these and then this white one that had the uncovered pickups. It just has such a vibe to it. So I had to pick it up to put a double trogly stamp on it, but it wasn't being advertised correctly at the shop. I think they just said it was a Les Paul studio and they said the pickups were replaced. Now, when I sold it the first time, assuming nothing has been changed, these are still the Tim Shaw PAFs, but it was like the neck pickup might have been rewound and the pickup covers were just taken off but these studio standards are great they're just a little bit thinner you might not even notice it had i not told you but because of that it makes them a little bit lighter in weight and this era of gibson is known for being pretty heavy so if you want a guitar from like your birth year but you have a bad back sometimes these can help you get close they're usually still pretty heavy though around nine pounds so if you're interested in being the next owner of this one you can find it on my website drogliesguitarshow.com and we've also got a couple guitars to say goodbye to, starting with our Emochi Stratocaster here. Check the full review and demo out because I really enjoyed this guitar, even though I was just buying it as a fan service. But I just want to say thank you to anybody who buys a Fender Made in Japan guitar because I kind of take a risk importing these things to make the review and demos. But outside of, you know, 1975 through current day Gibsons, this is what I feel I kind of specialize in and just really enjoy documenting. All the weird limited edition Fender Japan models. And it honestly just comes down to I'm not supposed to have these necessarily like it's not illegal but they're supposed to be region specific mainly because that's their prime demographic but whatever time to get this one shipped off I woke up this morning to kind of a, a bittersweet email. Something sold on Reverb and it said 1983 and then it got cut off it's like oh no not my spotlight yeah it's sold this is an absolutely gorgeous example. It's one of the ones that I called the Two-Face Top. You can find the full review and demo here, but it's like ultra quilted over here and then like almost next to nothing over here, depending on the viewing angle. But the nice thing about this one is it's a pretty active top. Like even the dead side actually has some pretty good figuring to it when you get into it. But this one's just so worn. I didn't know if I wanted it in my collection and that's why I put it up. However, at the same time, you know, the museum guys, they would probably like to see some worn examples, and I kind of do want to own every single spotlight in existence, but I've got so many guitars to buy if I want to make my dream a reality, so do I really need six spotlight specials right now? No, but I might just take the funds that I got from this one, because there was a different one I was looking at that was a little bit special, but I will definitely miss this one. I mean, it cleaned up really good. And at the end of the day, I can't be too sad. I got what I considered was top market value for this particular one, but it is a nice one. Hopefully I find another two-facer in a little bit better condition one day. So until next time, my friend. Our next one to say goodbye to? This didn't take long to sell at all. I priced these to go. It's the Blueberry Fade SG Modern, a fantastic guitar. I sold them at clean it yourself special pricing. Let's face it guys, I got such limited time in a day. Cleaning this one up to get top dollar was not my main priority. And it's actually going to somebody who's watched the show for quite some time. I know he likes to send me leads occasionally or video topic ideas. So I hope he enjoys it. To pair with that other one, we've got that 60s Les Paul Standard. This has kind of got a cool story though. It's going to Hawaii, which is a very nice tropical place. But I guess this is his first Les Paul, if I remember our conversations correctly. So you couldn't have chose a better one, my friend. I really, really do enjoy these 50s and 60s Les Paul standards. They're still a pretty good buy, but especially on the used market. Crazy price at 2000 bucks. But if you missed out on this deal, just check the demo shop. Usually you can get them for just a couple hundred more than that. But it starts its journey now. And to round out tonight's episode, the guitar being sent out is this Gibson ES-330. This video really did well. Like, it surprised me, but I had a great time cleaning this one up and making it look good. But the reason why I wanted to share this one is it's actually going back to a previous owner, and I thought that was really cool. Apparently, he had traded it into a shop when he was a little bit hard up for cash, and then the person that I bought it from purchased it from that shop. 
or somebody who got it from there. And then it's just finally coming full circle because he saw there were a few things that were only going to be on this guitar, like that neck rash area. And then he wanted to confirm the serial number with me. And yeah, sure enough, it was his old instrument. So he is getting this one back. All right, troglodytes, I think that is enough fun for today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss the updates on our new project with Sweetwater. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.